All right, guys, back to a classroom today, and I want to walk through a, an example of a workout. Um, there are exceptions to this for sure. I'm going to go over there a little bit off screen. I'm going to move around a little bit here, so bear with me because it's a big board, um, and I want to get through my thoughts because um, a lot of the questions uh, really come into about our programs or the, any other program for that matter is trying to decipher the best way to navigate the rep sets and percentages. And now <clears throat> with us, there is only really very little kind of thought process to this because we're trying to get the most out of every workout, right? That's kind of like, well, that's obvious. We're always trying to do that. But let me show you exactly what I mean mathematically. Now, I have a kind of an example day up here off camera. There are exceptions to this, okay? The exceptions to the percentages, the reps and sets, because we say, hey, the prescription is the reps and sets what you're gonna be potentially changing from workout to workout a little bit or in the moment really is the percentages. And I always like to say like, if you've gone to an eye doctor, right? And this, even if you haven't, um, what you do is they sit down in a chair and, and this is just new to me because I never had to go to an eye doctor. Um, but I would use this example because I'd see my sister and my parents and I, they'd have glasses and they'd sit you in the chair and they have the little thing they'd put over your eyes and they start switching between lenses and they'd say better, worse, no different. Because they're trying to find that close to optimal sort of lens from eye to eye, right? So like really that's what we're doing when we see a percentage in our programs, and I'll go over the exceptions here in a second, is is that like, whoa, is that that's too much. Like that's way too much or maybe that's not enough or after your third set, you're like, woo, I'm not able to hit that percentage. And we'll go into a, to how to break that down in a second. The exceptions to our programs, because it's not who we train, the exceptions are track and field throwers. Javelin, shot put, discus, hammer. Those are a given mass in which every single time the intent is to project that as fucking far as humanly possible. And in doing so, the exertion, that maximal force exertion has to be replicated. And you start seeing that in a weight room differently. Throwers are just different. If you've ever been in a weight room with really good throwers, those are the most enjoyable humans to train because they can train and move some weight, boy. So males and females, it is, they are extraordinarily enjoyable to train. The next exception is close to that. Olympic weightlifters. This is not a program for Olympic weightlifters because again, they're trying to get that mass from the ground to overhead with two different mechanisms of lift as fast as humanly possible each time. Not to say they don't do a hypertrophy and other certain things, but the percentages are different. The projections are different right? The rest periods are very different. So we're not, this is not that. Another exception is bodybuilders. Unless you are competing for your pro card or you're actually a professional bodybuilder, you're not a bodybuilder. Like bro science at the gym, some big guy that's taking this or doing that and giving you advice, that's not a bodybuilder, okay? If you're not adhering to the diet, the cutting, and the vast, vastly different percentages in the true bodybuilding world, this is not what we're talking about, that bodybuilding, even though this might be hypertrophy in our range of thinking, okay? But an exception is that this is not bodybuilding percentages. And the other one is powerlifters. It's the same thing, or strongman. Like, uh, you'll go to the Arnold Classic strongman and things like that, or a, a competitive powerlifter that's doing bench squat and deadlift. Also, not what we're doing here, okay? If you're a power lifter, that means you are actively competing in competitions annually to get the highest total. If you're just lifting fucking heavy weights, you're not a power lifter, okay? So we are doing, we're talking about the programs that we're using for the tactical space. This is a snapshot kind of of something out of our hypertrophy, just to give you some guidance, okay? We have barbell deadlift at 50% of 5RM, okay? Why are we using a 5RM? Because you're not a thrower, a power lifter, a bodybuilder, right? What we're trying to do is something that's repeatable, predictable, reliable, right? If I can shoot my gun one or two times, I'd be able to go to the next room and do it again and again and again. 
with high, 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 high level of accuracy. And also with that high level of accuracy, it's constant state of assessment. I don't come into one room and like draw my gun like this, the next room I'm really nice and easy. What I find is you start seeing guys are really competent, their gun draw is the same every single time. So they acquire the natural point of aim the same way every single time. Just like hitting off a baseball tee. We don't change that. We don't swing harder when you have the tee. Same idea, okay? So we're working off a of 5RM because you're not a power lifter. You're not an Olympic thrower. You're not trying to exert yourself with maximal force every single time, okay? We need something repeatable, reliable. On a good day and a bad day, we need a repeatable 5RM, okay? That's what we're working off of, okay? And also these percentages, they didn't come out of nowhere. These percentages came from the tactical population, came from me and my use, and everybody that comes in through this door and our previous gym doors of calculating and getting to a percentage that best exemplifies a trained individual. If you're untrained, right? We're gonna to get to that in a minute, okay? Lat pull down, 70% of body weight, 135 pound ab wheel. There's no deviation from this, okay? Chest supported incline dumbbell row at 40% of body weight. And I have underlined dumbbell for one reason, because people go, hey, was that one dumbbell weight or two? It's like, listen, man, if you actually fucking did the math and then understood what 40% of your total body weight in the single dumbbell is, and you think that, we, we, listen, choose a different job. We need intelligent people in the tactical space, not people that can't see the obviousness of this. We see it in bicep curls. Like, what do you mean I'm supposed to curl 30 or 40% of body with one? No one's doing that. No one is. No one on the planet is doing that. Unless you are a world-class strongman. And that's not who we're training, okay? So shifting the camera over a little bit, we have reps and sets. This is the prescription. You do not deviate from this, okay? You're not deviating from the prescription because the prescription is going to a value of total work, and we'll get to that in a minute. The, the physics of this is really straightforward, okay? So what we're gonna do is like, let's say you're able to hit 50% of your 5RM, okay? But the goal is, right, I'm trying to do 48 reps. And that's why we're saying your constant state of motion needs to be managed, right? We don't want the first ones nice and then the last one up, sling the arms up. That is unintentional, okay? And that's not how, we don't have value in that, okay? We need to, just like our gun, I need to have this really good posture going to my natural point of aim, the same contraction every single time, no matter what the gun is. Keep that in mind. No change, go from an AR-15 platform to an AK-47 to a, whatever, the draw, like the hand position might be a little bit different, but I'm coming to my same natural point of aim every single, no matter if I'm left, I'm right, I'm up, I'm down, okay? So the prescription is on this, you are going to do 48 reps. How? We're gonna to get to that here in a second, okay? Because we're not, we, if we, because here's the reality. You can say, well, I can't do 50% of 5RM. This is just a guidance number of is, is, can you do less? Can you do more? Is it, is it good enough? Because what we're asking you to do at a percentage, regardless of the percentage, we're saying we need you to move this 48 times with great accuracy, great tension, and there's a lot of strain to it. And so what if it is 45%? If this person has to go down to 45% and they do 48 reps really, really well, the physiological outcome then is that adaptation that we're trying to achieve, right? If you're very, very untrained, maybe it's at 40, but 40% 40 of a 5RM that you tried hard, your all five reps were the same, and you transcribe this into a prescription of 48 reps, you have now done 48 reps at a very, very accurate height and sense of contraction. And then you can adapt to it and you can adapt to it. And you can have all of a sudden, you pretty soon after a couple of weeks, you're, you're at 50%. But we can't bypass the percentages of adaptation. That's why we don't need to deviate from reps and sets. This is the prescription. This is a value that we're trying to achieve. And then what ends up happening is people get above this 50%, right? That's the goal. It's like, 
Because if you're having a really, really bad day, maybe you have to train, but your girlfriend, bro, whatever it is, you're having a real bad emotional day, this 50% might be very hard to achieve, but you still can go in and do 48 reps really well because like, let's say you are overseas. And I've seen this, I've been a part of that. People getting Dear John letters from their wives and girlfriends and oh, why? Hey, by the way, we have to go out on a mission tonight. Well, I'm sad, I can't go out tonight. Can I have a day off? No. So you even at a terrible, terrible emotional state, you still have to go in, do the job with accuracy, and dependability, that's what we're trying to reproduce here, okay? Because again, going into the math of this is really, really super simple. If the percentages can be varied a bit, a little bit, again, we're not saying go from 50% to 20 because you feel like cutting corners. We're saying, hey, let's bring that percentage down to what? So we can get maximal strain over 48 reps. Here are 48, 48, 60, and 48, right? We're looking at this like, here's your prescription. But the question is, is like, well, why can't I do eight sets of six? You can, if you can maintain it. Like, like, well, that's a good breakdown. It's like, maybe you can do 50%, but you have a hard time stringing together eight reps. What if you were able to string together a bunch of sixes with a good rest period? Because that's the next goal, rest period, rest period. It's a whole other comment conversation, but when you're ready, you don't take a massive rest periods, but your tension and your fatigue after each set determines your rest period based on your heart rate and oxygen saturation. So if you're managing heart rate and oxygen saturation, you're, that is the distance and time of your, your sets in between. That's your time under tension, right? And you're looking at, this is my time under tension. And then what is my work to rest ratio? That's based on heart rate. So maybe you do four sets of eight your fifth set, you can only get to six. Well, what do we do? Well, we're just, doesn't really matter. We're getting to 48 perfect reps. Maybe we set the weight down. We take a couple of rests. We pick it back up. We hit it again. It's no different than if I'm shooting, bang, bang, hit, 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 miss. <sighs> couple breaths, shoot again, hit, hit, hit. Did I lose any value in that? No, I taught myself to re-engage, refocus when things, posture started getting a little bit wonky, okay? So yeah, you could do four sets of 12. That's a bit of a reach maybe for certain, for certain lifts. But again, if you're doing 48 reps, the goal is to do them all. The first rep should be just as good or vice versa as, as, the, as the last rep. That's the whole idea is, well, shit, well, I, I went into this room and there wasn't supposed to be three people in a door. Well, there was, there's three people in a door. Now I got to deal with it. Sometimes... The people on the inside is a little bit more chaotic than you anticipated. Sometimes the programs don't work exactly how you want them. Awesome. But if I'm doing 48 perfect reps with good posture, good rest periods, I'm going to adapt to that. Okay. Because here's the real simple of it. What we're doing is, again, we're doing some two-dimensional math, kind of, in a three-dimensional space. We get it. Doing a bicep curl, a bench press, a barbell deadlift. It's a three-dimensional lift. I totally get that. But the mass that you're moving is a constant. The mass that you're moving in a bar isn't moving. The deadlift weight isn't moving, isn't changing throughout the lift. It's not getting lighter. It's not getting heavier. Gravity is not changing. Those are constants. So if gravity is not changing and the mass in the bar is changing, what two variables potentially could be in change? The distance and the state of acceleration based on Newton's two laws. Newton's second law, Newton's third law, okay? Or first law. Force equals mass times acceleration and work equals force times distance. So the only parameters, we're not adding time to this yet because it's not in power and speed. So in a two-dimensional space, we're like, yeah, Jeff, but the distance, if you have good posture throughout all these, you're gonna try to turn that into a posture-managed constant. It's not a true constant, but if your posture is managed through the whole time, the weight's not changing. Time we're not putting in there right now is a variable. But what is the only thing that can change? Your state of acceleration, which is your is assessed measured value, either perceived or a device. There's all these tethered and electronic devices that are measuring what? Your state of acceleration combined with the distance. 
If you have a constant distance, you're only managing acceleration because the mass and gravity is not changing. So when you're looking at these things, you're going, okay, well, what am I really trying to do? The exact same thing you're trying to do on a range. Hit the target with the accuracy every single shot. Acquire the same sight picture every single shot, no matter the body position. That's what we're trying to do here. And the closer you do that successfully, accurately in this prescription and adhering to percentages that might vary a little bit, but you're trying to work the top end, maybe your fifth set, you got to drop down 5% so you can acquire the percentages, a percentage in which the reps and sets, you're still maximally stressing out your system via posture. Because when we have all of these stressors put into place and you're managed and you're doing them right and all these sort of things, what ends up happening every single time? You get bigger, faster, stronger. What happens every single time when you don't manage posture or percentages? Or you, you chew, the, the, the book says, well, you gotta do 92% of one RM. Like, why? You're not a power lifter. And you had a terrible day. Like, why are we working 92% of one RMs? You don't ever, ever acquire this mass of adaptation when your certain nervous system's fried. The first human being to ever squat a thousand pounds was Dr. Hatfield, Dr. James Hatfield. His dissertation was the quest of a thousand pound squat. At no point, still pretty impressive, at no point did Dr. Hatfield, the late Dr. Hatfield, squat more than 720 pounds in that quest to squat a thousand. Submaximal training will always elicit in this, even in the powerlifting world, maximal results. That's not to say that you don't drive that weight up because 700 pounds is heavy. But when he got under the bar, he squatted 1,000. If you look at the powerlifters even today and the strongmen today, yes, they lift heavy weights, but they typically don't weigh, lift near the weights in, in mass and in intensity that often to, to like comparable to the weights they might get in a competition. And none of you are powerlifters or bodybuilders. None of you are strongmen. At least you're not at the world-class level. So if you wanna be a world-class operator and shooter, we need to compile stress in a manner that never ever lets you relinquish your posture with repetition that's repeatable, reliable, predictable, and then can be taught. That's the scientific model. That's it. So that's what we're trying to maintain throughout all of our reps and sets. Predictable, reliable. That's what we're doing, repeatable. That's what we're trying to do. That's the tactical space. If you can't do it twice, can't do it three times, you're not any value to us, okay? And you're not any value, value, not any value to your team. So take a look at your percentages. Maybe those shift a little bit, but what should not be, what should not be shifting is your prescription. This is it. This is where the stress comes, is your accountability to your movement patterns, the accountability to choosing proper percentages, and your accountability of getting to all the getting to and through all the reps and sets in that prescription.